Hi everyone, welcome to another Inventor tutorial. Uh, this is the second part of the tutorial that we did uh, previously and this tutorial is going to assemble the parts that we created uh, and apply motion constraints to those to that assembly. So let's jump on in and see where we end up. So picking up from the previous tutorial I did on uh, creating these parts, um, we have created a single part file that contains all of the parts and then we've used the make component function to create individual parts um, that were then brought into an assembly ready to create motion constraints around them. <clears throat> so uh, you can see that uh, the, all the components in here but if you try to click and left hold click and drag them they don't actually move and this is because they're grounded in place. So the first thing we want to do is unground um, the uh, the parts. It's always good to keep one part grounded so that it has no ability to move in free space. It makes motion constraining a, a little bit easier. So I'm going to unground slide, handle and pin by highlighting them all, right clicking and then uh, you can see there's a grounded option uh, that about two thirds of the way down. Um, I'm just going to select that and unground them and you'll actually see that the pin has been removed from them so they're now unpinned which will mean that we can actually cl click on them, move them and drag them out. Now um, we do already need, we do need uh, another pin and another um, slider so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, select the pin, right click, copy and then we'll just paste it somewhere else. So there we've got another pin ready to go and we'll do the same with the slide. So we'll copy and we'll paste and let's just go over there so, we've, so they're ready to go. Now motion constraints are basically relationships between certain objects. Relationships um, around two different points or all sorts of elements. We'll go through them in a minute. Uh, but they're contained up here within two different functions which actually can be perceived as almost the same. The first one we have is our joint option. We get this pop-up here where we can place a joint between two objects and the joint options first off it shows as automatic um, and then if we use the drop down we get all these other type of joints rigid, rotational, slider, cylindrical, planar and ball uh, which allows different types of motion um, against that joint. If we then click the constraint option next to it we get a, a different, we get a different pop-up but with different type of mate. So this is mating certain faces or edges or points together which then the object can move along that mated edge. Um, so we've got um, a, just a traditional mate, we've got an angle, we've got a tangent, we've got an insert and then we've got the symmetrical. And we've also got some other um, uh, tabs across the top here which we will look at in more detail in another tutorial. Um, the other options again we'll look at again in a bit more detail in this tutorial but they're about flipping components and, and lining up particular edges. But the joint and the constraint parts are how we create motion and limit the motion around certain other um, elements. So first off we need to know that we need to remember and know that part of all of this, the inventor, is working around faces. So uh, we, we've got a top face, a side face, bottom faces. We've got edges, so the edges are running along different parts 
vertical horizontal edges. We've then got all of our planes. Now we have our origin planes for this particular drawing, but we also have planes of each of the individual parts as well. So they can be very useful. We've also got the different axes um, that are issued either with the drawing or individual parts. And we've also got various different points, different center points, but we've also got points actually on the objects and these will be highlighted as we go through. Um, and we're creating relationships between all of these faces, edges, planes, axis and points. And the relationships are tangent, angle, cylindrical, you know, um, uh, 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 and they allow the thing to move uh, as we want to. So straight away, what we're going to do is we're going to create some relationships um, and we're going to create the relationship between the slider and the actual base itself. So I'll zoom in a little bit and I'm going to come over and I'm going to select the constraint and I'm just going to leave it as a mate at this moment in time. Now, I know through experience that I want to mate the bottom surface of the slider with the surface of the grooved section. So if I come around and look underneath and then select that face, um, I can then select the face that is the where, where the two faces will want to align. Uh, if it's done it right, then you should hear a little click or a little bong um, and it's sort of worked for you. Now, if I apply that, you will see that I can move it on that plane, but I can move it anywhere on that plane. Um, I can't move it vertically upwards because it's stuck to that plane. It can just move anywhere on that plane. So we need to create another constraint. Um, so we might then constrain the edge of the slider to the edge of the groove. So we'll do that. We'll do that edge there with, have to get round and that edge there. And then we'll click apply. It did a little uh, bong so that the, it, it showed that it worked. Now, if I uh, move that slider. Now all I can do is move it along that edge and along that plane. I can't move it left or right, up or down. I'm just going to move it in that one direction. So that relationship is showing that it is working. Now again, there is other ways of doing this. Um, for the other one, I'll show you the other side. We'll show you a different way. So we're going to, for this one, we're going to create a joint constraint. And we are going to select the same bottom surface, but I'm going to select a, a flat. They get these little circles. I'm going to make sure that I select the point um, that is flat on the bottom of the surface. And I'll zoom in a bit. Uh, and you can see I might be able to do it up the face of the uh, the slide or the bottom face. I want the bottom face on the edge and the circle is showing the point at which I have selected. So I could go middle or the other face. Uh, I want this particular point here. And then I'm going to marry it up with the same surface and the same plane as that the two will make together. So I'll come over and there we've got it. And now it's 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 actually lined up really well and it, it's going to move along that axis and not anywhere else along that plane as well. The thing is, is it's rigid here over here in the pop up. It's showing it's rigid. We want to select something that would copy or equal the motion that we want. Uh, if I do a rotational one, you'll see it will spin on its axis, that single point. Um, if I do a cylindrical one, you can see it goes up and vertically down along that point. 
Uh, we want a slider which will show a movement forwards and backwards on the axis and on the plane that we want. So we'll click apply um, and then we'll cancel again. So we've got two objects moving exactly the right uh, orientation that we want uh, along the correct planes and, and edges, but we did it in two very different ways and they both work fine. Um, for the pins, we'll do the pins now. I'm going to use the joint again. Um, and I'm going to select the very bottom of the pin because I'm going to make the bottom of the pin with the bottom of the hole in the slide. So I'll select the bottom of the pin and then I'll come over and then I'll find the pin hole and I'll go and look down the bottom of it and I'll make sure I get into the bottom. Yep, so there. Now it's selected a rotational um, joint. Now that could work and that that's a possible that could work in this scenario. Um, but I've found over the years that actually there's certain, you can put too many relationships in that have too much motion and it can confuse quite uh, can confuse the software quite easily. So in my experience, I would actually call this a rigid joint um, and therefore the, the, the slide and the uh, pin is mated together and then I'll make the handle uh, rotate around the um, the actual pin itself. So I'll click apply. Now for the other one, we'll do it the other way. So we'll go with a constraint. And what we're going to do is we're going to constrain the center axis of the pin with the center axis of the hole. And it went bonk. That's fine. I'll click apply and just click cancel because now I'll be able to move it up and down. And actually when I move it forwards and back, so does the slider because they have that relationship together. What we want to do now is make mate the bottom of that surface with the bottom of the surface of the hole. So I'm going to constrain it again. I'm going to select the bottom face of the pin and I'm going to come over and I'm going to look in the hole and I'm going to select the bottom face of the hole. Um, got that bong again, so we'll click apply and click cancel. And now they're mated together. So when I drag them, they move uh, with the slider. Um, now what we want to do is we want to position that the sort of handle. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use the joint for both of them. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to select the top of the hole like so you can actually take top either either one the either top edge or the actual hole itself they they are they are independent but they can work both ways so i'll select the top point there and i'll marry it up with the top point of the pin itself now it's showing as rigid. Well, we don't want that because as the slider moves, we're going to want the thing to rotate. So we will use a rotational um, type of uh, joint. Click apply. And then what we'll do is we'll do the same again for the other pin. So we'll uh, click cancel and then we'll come back in. We'll do another joint. We'll select the center point of the hole again and marry it up with the center point of the pin. Now it will look like it's it's broken it. Um, we first would need to remember to change the joint type to our rotational type. And it still looks like it's broken it. But if we click apply, then it puts it all back together. And now when we cancel it, if we grab the handle, we can actually move around the planes quite and they, they will actually allow us to spin round. Um, so that's how to do relationships. We're going to do one more relationship between uh, two planes um, that we will then drive those to create a 360 degree motion. Um, so we're going to do an, a normal constraint. We're going to choose this flat edge here, this flat side edge of the handle. 
and we're going to marry it up to the flat side edge of the base itself. And we're going to choose our, from our type, we're going to choose an angle and we're going to set it to zero and we're going to set it to a directed angle. Um, we will then apply that and cancel. And now what you'll find is that it won't move at all because we've set the angle between those two planes, those two faces, a zero. But what we can do is in our relationship drop down is we've got these are all the relationships that are built up of this model. And the bottom one is our angle. Um, and we can now vary that angle and that will then cause the rest of the uh, relationships to move around that pivot angle. So I'm going to right click on there and I'm going to on, on the angle I'm going to click drive and we get this pop up here. I'm going to start at zero degrees and I'm going to go um, I'm going to keep on going round and round and round so I'll go with uh, 3000 degrees because it'll just keep on spinning round. Um, and then I'm just going to play it and I'll just use the forward play button and you'll see that it turns through 360 degrees. And it'll just keep on going until our position here says 3000 degrees. So it will show that the motion works. The key issue here with all of this is to build up our relationships and test them out periodically through our more complex models. If we try and do all the relationships in one go, um, the likelihood is that, that there will be incompatibility between some of the relationships and we'll never know which one's actually the problem and then we'll end up having to go back and delete all of them. So uh, that's the introduction into a very simple uh, view of relationships um, to get you thinking about how you uh, have to marry up the different faces, edges, planes, axis and the points of the different elements or the different models, the different part models uh, to create the relationships that will then ultimately allow movement to take place. So like I said, yes, introduction, we'll do more and more complex versions of these um, in the future. Um, and um, we will also do uh, sub assemblies and assemblies in the future. But uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. Um, and uh, check back for some more Inventor uh, in the future.